Hello and welcome to Pickleball Therapy, the podcast dedicated to your pickleball improvement. We are all about helping you achieve your pickleball goals with a focus on the mental part of your game. No matter what you're trying to accomplish in pickleball, pickleball therapy is here for you. My name is Tony Roy. I am your host, and it's a pleasure to be with you here for this episode. Last week, we talked uh, some practicality, right? We talked about what do we do in open play when we are partnered with a player who may be create a little bit of an imbalance on the court in terms of being a quote-unquote weaker player on the court and being targeted. How do we deal with that? If you didn't have a chance to check that one out, go back and check that one out. Give you some tips on how to deal with those situations. Uh, and it's not all, it, all hope isn't lost when you're playing in an imbalance situation out there. This week, we're going to shift gears uh, back to the back to the mind and back to how we perceive our relationship with this sport, right? When we're playing and uh, there's a, it's a common trap that we fall into, which is what did we do wrong there, right? And we're going to talk about that because, you know, we did something wrong. We always do something wrong. Nah, we don't, but we're going to get into it in this week's podcast. Before we jump into the podcast, uh, a couple of quick notes. Number one, we have a course in our academy that deals with unforced errors. So if you're worried about hitting, making unforced errors, and listen, we all make unforced errors as part of the game. What we, all we can do is reduce the unforced errors in our game. If you want to learn some really good tips on how to reduce your unforced errors, check out that course inside the Pickleball Academy. Uh, we're trying to bring you some courses that will help you in particular parts of the game, specific parts of the game. Um, and uh, these courses are supplemental or adjunct, if you want to think about it that way, to our Pickleball System course. Pickleball System being... Everything you need to know to play awesome pickleball step by step, and the academy being you know more specialized kind of detail areas that that uh, we explore a little further. You can think about it almost like you know you go to college, you get your degree, that's a pickleball system. You want to go get a PhD course or a master's degree or something like that, you can go check out courses inside the academy. And on Force Service is no exception, so you can check that one out at betterpickleball.com. And if you have a second, it really helps us out if you rate and review the podcast. If you've already done it, we appreciate it. If you haven't done it yet, take a minute. If you have a moment of your time to rate and review it, it really helps us reach other players who, just like you, may benefit from hearing the words in our podcast. All right, let's dive into the subject this week, which is, I kind of like the title of it, right? So, you know, what 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 you did wrong, right? What Because you, you certainly did something wrong, right? I mean, that's how we're always seeing things out there. And... And I'll tell you a funny story that that uh, a funny educational story, right? That learning story that happens in every camp that we teach. You know, we're we're uh, in our Tampa camps right now. And if you're ever interested in one of our camps, we have this year. We're going to have more camps than we did last year. We're doing some camps in Folsom. Uh, I know we have some camps in Tahoe, obviously, and uh, uh, there may be some other ones out there. We'll see. But right now, those are the ones that you have available to you. You can go check that out at betterpickleball.com. But what happens at all our camps is we'll have a coach play session on day two. And coach play means, you know, we, we give uh, instructions. We, uh, we play very controlled, de deliberate games that are intended to teach the subject that we're working on, right? To focus on that and to see how players are doing with it. And, um, and uh, CJ, myself, and the Better, Pickle, Better, Better Pickleball coaching team will walk around and, and, and assess, right? What's going on and give feedback. So what will happen is uh, towards the end of day two, I'll walk around and I'll see a situation where um, the, play, the play was awesome, right? I mean, it was nice rally, good rally, you know, 10, 12, 13, 14 shots, rally ended, right? All rallies have to end. And I'll walk onto the court and I'll bring everybody to the net. By then, the campers already know that that's part of the process. So I'll come out to the court, everybody comes up to the net, and I'll just ask open-ended. I'll say, all right, what, what went wrong there? What happened, Right. And it's almost without, without fault, without exception, I should say, that all four players on the court say, they look at me and they're like, what did I do wrong? So their initial reaction, right, of all four players is, I did something wrong. I wonder what Coach Tony's going to tell me I did wrong in that rally. And it's an interesting psychology, right, um, that all four players are thinking, that each one of them did something, must have done something wrong, right? Because of course they did. The rally ended and something, some mistake was made. In those situations, what I'll tell the students is nobody did anything wrong. Everybody was, everything was fine. Rally ended, right? So, you know, 
uh, certainly someone missed a shot or, or there was a put away or something, right? But that doesn't mean that somebody had to do something wrong. And it's, it's a framing kind of a thing, right? It's, it's, it's trying to always find fault in what we do and how we play. Um, and I'm here to tell you that many times when you think that you did something wrong, you may not have done anything wrong. Okay. Now I'm not saying that mistake, you're not going to make mistakes. Okay. That's, that'd be silly. And part of this process is accepting that mistakes are part of the game and we're going to commit mistakes. And I'm going to talk about those in a second and give you some tips on how to process that information when you do, when you do make a mistake. But I want you to start from the premise that oftentimes when you're thinking I did something wrong or I made a mistake, it's a decent chance that you did not in fact make a mistake or do anything wrong. Okay, uh, and and in these situations that I'm describing to you at the camps, these are situations where there's a nothing to point out to any player. Everybody battled. Everybody did their jobs. The rally just ended. Um, yet all four players, for a lot of times, sometimes it's three, but it's, oftentimes all four are sitting there going, "Okay, I know I did something wrong. I, I'm sure I did something wrong." And so there's this negative uh, uh, tendency or negative uh, bent to it immediately. And that's something that can be damaging because if you're always looking for something wrong, that you did something wrong every rally, it's just really difficult to play that way, right? And to have a good time. Um, so start from the premise that, was I, was, did I really do something wrong there or not? And I'm going to give you a quick, an easy example of one that's oftentimes not, the, um, not something you did wrong. And that is when you say to yourself, I needed to have my paddle ready. And I'll give you a, a quick real-life example that happened uh, a week ago when I was playing in a group. Good players, all four or five-plus players, you know, solid group. Um, and there was a uh, our opponents popped the ball up. One opponent popped the ball up. And the other opponent got <laughs> smashed, got obliterated by my, my partner just smashed the ball and, you know, won the rally against the other. Not the player who popped it up, but the partner. And the partner's reaction was, I needed to have my paddle ready. I got to have my paddle ready. He kept on, you know, like he was upset at himself. And so me and my partner look at him and go, man, it was nothing to do with you. <laughs> that, was, that was a slam ball at, you know, point blank range. Um, and even his partner was like, you didn't do anything wrong. I fed him a, a pop-up and put it away. But the, in, the instant reaction of the player who got slammed was I needed to have my paddle ready. That's a really easy one. That's like almost like, uh, like just... Uh, it's almost like a trap plant. I don't know. Now I'll get into gardening, but it's like it's like it, we're attracted. It's just so easy to conclude that, right? That I needed to have my I should have my paddle ready because I missed the shot coming my way, even though it was getting slammed at me at 700 miles an hour at point blank range by a player. I had nothing to do with the situation that created that, but it's my fault because I didn't have my paddle ready. So that's a that's an easy one to to really question yourself. If you know whatever you say, ah, I need to have my paddle up. I need to have my paddle ready. Was that really the, the, the reason? So, you know, give yourself some, uh, a break. Give yourself a little bit of a break here uh, when you think you might have made a, uh, a mistake. So I want you to start from the premise that, you know, you, you, you are going to make mistakes. And then I want you to, the next st step in this process is, I'm going to make mistakes, but did I really make a mistake that particular time or am I just projecting a mistake onto myself even though it wasn't really a mistake that I made? And I'm here to tell you that you can lose a rally and not have made a mistake, not a mistake that needs to be addressed, right, or needs to be thought about. And my case for this is a very simple case, which is pro play. When you watch pro play matches, and these are the best players on the planet, their rallies end, okay? Their rallies come to an end. They don't play indefinitely, right? And so if their rallies come to an end, does that mean by definition or by extension that one play, some player on the court is a knucklehead or they did something silly or s something like that? Oftentimes the answer is no. It's just nice rally, it had to end, and it ended, and we're done having the conversation about it. Now, there's a lot of other there's a lot of other ways to kind of approach this in our camps and inside the pickleball system. We we give you a bunch of different ways to kind of think more constructively about how to analyze 
post game post rally situations to determine whether you need to think further or whether you're done with the with the analysis. But generally speaking, I'm here to tell you that there's a lot of times when you're trying to find fault somewhere in yourself or anything where fault simply does not need to be found, where everything is fine and the rally just ended. So, um, so start from those premises, okay? And then I want you to think about the fact that that you know that that you are going to make mistakes. The question is when you make a mistake and when you um, when it is correct to keep thinking about it, right? So I made a mistake and I need to give some thought to this mistake. Then what you want to do is be constructive with that process. It does not help you to simply say, I made a mistake and then go down some path of, I'm a terrible player, I'm an idiot, I can't believe I'm so stupid. Whatever, whatever damaging kind of language you may use sometimes, that's not helpful and not going to do anything for you. Um, and it's certainly not going to avoid you from making that mistake again in the future. You're just beating yourself up then. What you want to do to be constructive is you can do, I'm going to give you two ideas. One is, if it's a mistake that you can fix in the moment, if you know how to do that, right? And inside the system, we call that you know, knowing how to fix your, your, your errors in real time. Because I'm going to go back and repeat this. Errors will happen. You'll make mistakes. There's no way to avoid that. Even the best players make mistakes in their game. If you know how to make how to correct the mistake in real time, then correct the mistake in the during the game. And what I mean by that is, let's say it's a mechanical error, so you missed a return of serve. Um, you know, missing a return of serve a lot of times, yeah, that's one that you got to introspect, right? Because it's a return of serve. You know, unless something really weird happened with the ball bounce or something, uh, you, you know, you have control over that shot, a lot of control over that shot. So that's something that you can influence. Uh, and if you miss return to serve, there's nobody else on the court who's involved in that other than you. Again, assuming not a weird bounce or anything. So let's say you have a missed return to serve. So you're thinking, okay, I miss return to serve. Step number one, I'm going to observe, right? I observe that I missed a return of serve. I've now made the decision, okay, I need to think about that for a second because that is something that is something that I, it's a mistake that I made and that's okay, but it's something that I can, I can do something about. And if I can do something about in that game, then what I'll do is I'll think to myself, okay, I missed return serve. Was it where I was standing? Was it my foundation? Was it my stroke mechanic? You go through a, a mechanical analysis uh, where you break down the, the shot. Um, and if you're a system member, you know how to do this. It's all inside your mechanical pillar. There's the steps in there. So you basically go through that, those, that process of thinking through the shot. And then you say, um, um, it, you know, work backward to figure out the problem. And then you try and, and, avoid making the same error the next time that you go return serve okay so that's one way you can constructively deal with feedback that you made a mistake the other thing that you can do is if you're not able to correct it in real time meaning during that game just make a note of it and right? make a mental note maybe after the game make a little note on your phone or write it down on a pad or something right you know i'm i need to work on my return to serve then you will find the resources that will help you Work on your return to serve. You put in the work and you work on your return to serve. That's a constructive way of dealing with the feedback that will naturally come when you invariably make a mistake because you will invariably make mistakes. Even the best players on the planet make mistakes. What we want to do is we want to not blow it out of proportion, thinking that we're making mistakes all the time because that is likely not the case and we then want to be constructive with how we deal with the feedback or how we handle the feedback when we do, in fact, make a mistake. The key here is to not allow mistakes to become bigger than they are, right? That's why we keep perspective in terms of, you know, how often is this really happening? And also not to allow mistakes to become a negative in our game and in our relationship with Pickleball. Because at the end of the day, what this is about it's about having the best and most then the best and healthiest relationship that we can with the sport that we love which is the sport of pickleball i hope this podcast helps you next time you play uh, and if you're on your way to the court listening to it fantastic try and apply that today this is a podcast episode that you should probably bookmark 
because this is the kind of podcast episode, if you feel that you're a player that's always making mistakes and you're always messing up and you're just a disaster out there, and I, I say a disaster in terms of how you're viewing yourself, it's nothing to do with how you're playing, right? Because you're, you're not seeing things clearly. This is a really good episode for you to bookmark and for you to come back to more than once so that you can work on this process of being more constructive with your mistakes. I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. As always, share this podcast with your friends. There's a lot of players out there who could benefit from having a better understanding of the mistakes that they're making and how they're not as many as they think and how to deal with them constructively. And if this podcast is helping you and making you feel better about your pickleball, I'm going to bet you it's going to help them. As always, keep enjoying this beautiful gift, this beautiful game that we have that we call Pickleball, and I'll see you next time.